Welcome back to Getting Started with Unreal Tournament 3. In this video, we're going to give you a general overview of the workflow involved with creating your own maps and mods for Unreal Tournament. Now, this chart that you see here kind of outlines this workflow, and we're going to go over this chart piece by piece and fill you in on exactly what it means and the various things you can expect as you create your own levels and mods. For starters, if you would like to be able to bring in your own custom content, such as your own models, your own weapons, your own vehicles, textures, and so on and so forth, you are going to need some external applications. Not everything is going to be creatable inside of Unreal Ed. So if you want to make your own characters for instance, you're going to need your own 3D modeling software, such as 3DS Max, Maya, or perhaps XSI. Now, if you uh, would like to create the kind of models that you generally see inside of uh, Unreal Engine 3 games like Gears of War or uh, Unreal Tournament 3, you're probably going to need some sort of high detailing application, such as ZBrush or Mudbox, and that's going to be working along with your, uh, your 3D modeler to get that final look, so that you can get a model and a normal map that you can then bring into Unreal Ed. Also, it would probably be handy to have some sort of 2D uh, image editing software, such as Photoshop. You have several other options as well. But uh, basically, you're going to need some means to create and work with the textures that will be covering the models that you bring in. Now, once you're done with these assets, you're going to be importing them into Unreal Ed and then saving them out into packages. Now, with me is my good friend Logan. Logan's going to talk to us a little bit about what packages are. Well, packages are a file format that allows the Unreal Engine to store various kinds of assets. A package is a general format in which you can store many different kinds of assets. You can see from the diagram, we can put things like particles, sounds, meshes, and materials all into packages. They make very convenient containers to hold all of your assets for use in, inside a level. That's right. We're going to import things like models that we've created from 3ds Max or Maya and uh, store them in a package as some sort of a mesh, be it a skeletal mesh or a static mesh, which we use generally for decoration and doesn't move. Uh, any sort of textures that we create are going to be uh, imported into packages as well and then probably saved out into some sort of a material so that it can then be applied to a character, to a, uh, a piece of BSP, to a weapon, to a vehicle, to all sorts of things. And everything that we create, all of the assets that we generate, uh, be they uh, pre-produced, maybe something that came with Unreal or something that we create, is in the end going to be stored in some sort of a package. And then we're going to bring actors into our scene that read from those packages and allow us to see these various assets in our level. Okay, now on the other side of this, we have actors and Unreal scripts, and these are things that are already included with Unreal Ed. They are parts of the editor, and not really things that we create as much as things that we will bring in and edit on our own. In general, Logan, what is an actor? Well, uh, if you want to look at it from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, actors are the things that allow scripting to take place and allow code to take place inside of the game. It's kind of the coded bridge between raw assets and live items that exist inside the game. That's right. And there's uh, such things as, uh, as you can see here on the diagram, we have lights, we have pickups, such as weapons and ammunition and armor and vehicles, uh, triggers, which will cause scripted sequences to happen, things as simple as opening doors or maybe as complex as, you know, enemies dropping in from the sky and alarm bells going off. Uh, brushes, and these are the things that will actually define the shape of your level. Very important in the creation of your level, as you'll see in, in the following videos. Uh, volumes, which allow you to control what's going on in certain areas of your level. Some volumes do uh, such simple things as maybe blocking the character from entering. Others are a little bit more complex and will actually apply various forms of physics onto players as they enter them, giving you the feeling that you're swimming through water as opposed to just running around. And also such things as movers which uh, encompasses things like doors and lifts and whatnot. Now, the key here is that you're going to take these actors and you're going to bring them into your level. You're actually going to add them in, set them up in some way, edit their properties, along with many of the assets that have come in from these packages that you've stored, and then all of that is going to be saved out, and from that you will create your final map, your mod, or what have you. So there's a lot of work that goes into this, and this is really only a generalization 
over all of the work that goes into creating a level. I mean, you're going to find that it'll start with carving out your BSP space, populating everything with static meshes, adding your lighting, dealing with texturing, bringing in your scripted sequences to control when and how things are going to happen. The list really does go on and on. And I'm happy to say that over the next uh, many hours of video, you're going to be exposed to a great many of the things that you'll need to know in order to successfully create your own high-end maps and mods. Now with that, that's going to wrap things up for this video, but keep this workflow in mind as you see a lot of the upcoming videos and see where each thing that we cover kind of fits into this as you proceed through and learn how to create your own mods.